right? So the class uh, title today is Don't Be Carnally Minded. Don't Be Carnally Minded. Let me look over here. I'm trying to move with the motion. All right. Now, what does it mean to be carnally minded? Well, Officer Caleb, can you get the definition of carnal for me? So we, you know, get that out of the way before we go forward. And just like I said, it ties into the question there because that was, it was a carnal minded question to say you don't know, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what you're doing from what you're not doing. You know what you're doing. You know what you got to do. You know what you, you, you shouldn't be doing. You know what I'm saying? And it's not to say that you're being, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to clown or, or diss the brother or sister asking the question, but I'm saying it's a carnal question because on a spiritual standpoint, you would examine yourself and you would, you know, you would do things that is of the spirit. That's which is of the scriptures, right? All right. So let's see that uh, definition there. Carnal, relating to physical. Physical, because a lot of times people can only, they deal with things that's right in front of them, you know, things that they can only see. But when we know that the scriptures, it talk about stuff we have not seen. Has you know, there's things that we have not seen is knowledge and a lot of different things that's going on that is on the spiritual side of things, not the carnal side. Go on. Especially sexual uh -huh. needs and activities. Right. So even see how it says uh, especially sexual, uh, it ties into that too because some people are just, you know, they just see uh, muscles just see muscles and hazel eyes and and they're gone you know what i'm saying or they, yeah they just see yeah they, they see was it three-piece meal <laughs> was it le leg breast and thigh they see they see three-piece meal and, and and they don't care if she if she don't know her abcs <laughs> as long as she she you know what i'm saying as long as she looks according to what they like or whatever they they jump in, right? So I don't want to. I'm not leaning on the uh, the sexual aspect too much because I know a lot of the um, the synonyms are on a sexual side, but more so it says relating to physical. You know, it's like physical things, things them that is you know before us that we see, not things them that is scriptural that is spiritual. You understand? So we're gonna try and. Uh, give a little more understanding on that so y'all can see what it's really talking about in the scriptures, okay? So let's get, um, start off with Romans chapter 8. Romans 8, and we're going to read from 5 to 8. Romans, chap Romans chapter 8, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And those that are after the flesh, you're going to mind the things of the of the flesh, that worldly stuff, that's carnal things. Go on. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Right, scriptural stuff, knowing that, hey, if we have faith and we believe and we keep the laws that we're going to be saved, that we're going to be protected, and we know that we follow what the scripture says, we're going to gain wisdom and understanding and we fear God. These are spiritual things. All right, go on. For to be carnally minded, is death to be carnally minded is death because what that's contrary to what the bible says carnally is this worldly stuff carnally is like saying it's, it's it's like saying worldly fleshly you know what i mean it's physical go on but to be spiritually minded is life and peace to be spiritually spiritually minded is life and peace and that's what we all would like we want we want everlasting life and of course we want peace among, you know, our people. We want us to be able to get along and and, and function right. But that's not going to happen with a carnal mindset. Anyway, go on. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. You see that? The carnal mind is what? Enmity against God. Enmity is hate. It's hatred. Being The carnal mindset is hatred towards the Most High God. Take that in. Go on. For it is not subject to the law of God. It is not subject, it, 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 they don't care to follow what the Bible says. They don't care to follow what God says. Go on. Neither indeed can be. And it won't be able to because you're carnal. You, if you're carnal, you won't be able to follow what the Bible says. If you focus on carnal, you're not going to uh, follow what the Bible says. All right. Uh, was that? No. What do I want to go to? Yeah, read on. So then, they that are in the flesh 
cannot please God. That's harsh. That's why we it's important for us to try and always take things from a spiritual standpoint. You know, don't try to be smart or pull the wool over our eyes or leadership's eyes and think that everything is going to be fine. The most high and his angels, they know what you're really doing behind closed doors and when nobody's around. They know how you're thinking. They know what you're doing. They know what you're saying, all of that. And those are those things that you entertain or that you pay your most of your time and focus to is going to be what's going to affect you because just because you never got no judgment or nothing for whatever things you did wrong or you're doing wrong don't mean that it's not going to happen you if you're doing wrong and you're doing things that's contrary to the bible you better fix that and quick before it's too late that's the best thing i can show you all right so let's uh let's move on get first corinthians chapter 3 verse 3 First Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 3. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying uh -huh. and strife and strife and divisions, right. are ye not carnal and walk as men? Read that again because we're, this, is a, this, was, uh, this was me using this scripture to gauge. Do we have carnal-minded people in the congregation of Toronto, let alone IUIC? Read that one more time. For ye are yet carnal. Uh -huh. For whereas there is among you envying. Is there envy among the body? Hell yes. We got brothers envying other brothers. Oh, how come he got promoted to a soldier and I didn't get promoted to a soldier? How come he got an officer and, and I'm not an officer? Oh, how come she gets to go in the kitchen and I don't get to go? Oh, how come she gets put over here and I don't get... How come she gets to sit in the front and I can't sit in the... I'm just using it on, I'm using it on, a, on a minute you know, simple mindset, but there's envy inside the congregation. That's the whole point. Go on. And strife. Strife, that's arguments and, uh, you know, that's that that's going on. Sisters and certain sisters don't get along. Certain brothers don't get along. Go on. And divisions. There's divisions. Some people don't want to rock with others. You see all the little, there's little cliques around the place, especially on the sister's side. But there's cliques on the brother's side too. But it's not as serious over here. But it's cliques. When it's a when it's a situation where you can't be you can't be yourself in a peaceful, positive way with anyone that's on whatever side. If you're a brother and you can't be peaceful and respectful and reason and vibe with any bro any brother, then that shows you kind of the, the the type of mindset that you have. You know what I'm saying? Say likewise on the sister's side. If a sister now she can't be peaceful, she can't be respectful to no one but her little clique, her little circle of friends. That shows what spirit you have. What, what, what verse is that again? So that's that. That's that division. Go on. Are ye not carnal? So if you have, if these things are, if you have these things, uh, go on in with you. Are you not carnal? Go on. And walk as men. So you're walking just like the regular brother and sister that's in the world. Because that's why we come in. We still have pieces of our carnal mindset. Is a carnal, we've been rocking with the carnal mindset our whole life before we learned this truth. So we're still going to be there to some extent, but we have to uh, tap into our spiritual uh, mindset. And the spiritual mindset is what keeps you in this truth and what keeps you from just having, you know, uh, evil ways. I, I, wanna, I don't want to say coonish ways. You know what I mean? I, I want to. I don't want to say. I want to say that word, but I don't know who's offended. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, the ratchet ways on the sister's side. The sisters get ratchet and rude and all that to keep the, the scripture is going to show you the spiritual way that you need to be and conduct yourself. You, we got to tap into that. The spiritual way how you're going to deal with brothers instead of the worldly way which, where you want to tell a man about himself and box a man or whatever and deal with a man. You know all rough and, and disrespectful what the scripture says to be contrary so that's something that we all got to look at all right um let's move on uh let's get second corinthians chapter 10 second corinthians 10 start at four second corinthians chapter 10 and verse four we we'll read from uh four to six 
2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see that? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. It's not carnal. You know, it's like, if you, even if you think about it, okay, read on. I'll get to it. But mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Pulling down of the strongholds. So when they said the weapons of our warfare, the way we war in this truth is not a, a physical fight. It's not a battle. It's a spiritual thing. You see what I'm saying? If someone does you evil, the word, it, the, the, the carnal side would be to go and put hands on the person. You know what I mean? Or do something to them. But if we know that it's the most high test in us, why are we doing something to that brother? Or why are we doing something to that sister? If we know that from a spiritual standpoint, it's the most high trying us or Satan, you know, trying us to see if we're going to follow up the spirit or we're going to do what God really says we should be doing. All right, read that one more time. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It's going to pull down all these lies, pull down all this, all this fake stuff, put on all this nonsense in the world that everybody holds in high esteem, and that everybody sets standards by. All, these, all this foolishness, you know, this reputation and, you know, having a good reputation or having, I don't know what they call it, you know what I'm saying? stripes i'll say in the street stripes you know little things like that that's that just pulls down those strongholds that people is uh, dictate where you are and who you are or oh, as a female you ain't nothing unless you got red bottoms and you know whatever yeah you gotta have the nice bags of the dior and whatever dolce and cabana well, i don't know what the hell people wear you know, the standards that are set by people in the world is, you know, according to what the Europeans find uh, uh, lavish. You know what I mean? What Esau, is, according to Esau's standards. Anyway, go on, because this is where I want to get to. Verse 5, casting down imaginations. Casting down imaginations. When you have that spiritual mindset, when you're, when you're fighting on a spiritual level, you can cast down the imagination that's going to tell you you're nothing. I could tell you, you ain't nothing. It's showing you where the power is. It's showing you there's, there's power in having uh, the spiritual mindset because you have the carnal. You can't fight. You can't fight against, you, you can't fight carnally against a, in a spiritual battle. You need to have spiritual weapons, which are coming from the scriptures, the laws. You know what I'm saying? You know, like I say, when you bring a, a knife to a gunfight, are you going to bring <laughs> carnal how are you going to bring a carnal gun to a spiritual battle? You're going to shoot. What are you going to shoot? You can't even see nothing. What are, you, what are you aiming at? What are you shooting your gun at? There's nothing there. You know what I'm saying? That I'm trying to take, I'm trying to have people think. But it said it's going to cast down imaginations, cast down all the lies. You ain't nothing. Oh, you. that Bible can't save you. Do they know what's going on? Oh, they can just see what's going on. Do they know what's, if, do they know if there's a big angel standing in front of you? That's ready to box their head off. So that's how it's gonna. That's how being in this truth and being loyal to this truth is gonna cast down those imaginations that the world has set up. So we go ahead. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. That's the whole. That's the world, yo. Who cares about that Bible stuff, yo? Yo, I gotta get mine, yo. Sisters, oh, that thing is so old. It's back in the day. I'm not submitting to nobody. Oh, this, that. I have to live my life. All that foolishness. Go on. And bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. All, you know what I'm saying? Instead of following what the world is saying or what this, this actor is saying or what this, this uh, news reporter is saying or this, this uh, political uh, person is saying, let's follow what Christ is saying. Let's submit to what Christ is saying, not what Oprah is saying. Let's not submit to what, uh, who's a female? Who's like a female that people, let's not follow what Beyonce is saying. Let's not follow what Cardi B is saying and be loyal to what she's saying. I'm, or Wendy Williams. I'm trying to use someone that, that people really hold in high esteem. In Jake. I said Oprah. Oprah was the main one, but you know, who are those females, these type of females that are, you know, up there of some type of status that they feel like, you know, sisters feel like, yeah, you know, that's a strong, that's a, 
that's a strong woman. That's a that's a that's a a real positive woman, you know. I want to be like her. No. Uh, anyway, but go on. But my my whole point is, there's so much things that's in the world. If we look at things carnally, like we watch a music video, or we hear a song, and yeah, the beat is nice. You know, you know, the beat sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, you know, the flow is nice, but the content and what they're saying, what is it? What is it telling you? What's it telling you? Go to the club, you know. Uh, the I heard the Beyonce song on the radio. The I, I don't want to sing it. The ladies leave your man at home and all that. Yeah, ladies leave your man at home. The club is full of ballers and their pockets oh, full of oh, dough. That's so leave your man at home and go to the club and go mess with some next man and commit adultery. You know what I'm saying? And all, 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 all the what is it saying? Some and all the fellas leave their girl with her friends. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go do my thing, and you go do your thing, kind of thing. You know, it's it's setting up the grounds for fornication and uh, and adultery. Break this. Break God's laws. I'm just using that because that was what I heard on the radio just Friday, and I was like, this is some wicked stuff, man. I'm really taking in what's going on, you know? But I'm using that, because from a spiritual standpoint, You can, I can see that and point it out. What is it, what's the song about? Committing fornication, lasciviousness, reveling, you know, uh, uh, covetousness. Because someone's going to see that girl, she's going to have a ring on, she's married, but she... You know, she's she's going to have fun. Or if someone has money and, you know, all that. So that's what they're focusing on. No, the, the club is full of ballers and their pockets full of dough. This is, some, this is madness. That's, spirit, see, I'm, that's, that's how you look at it from a spiritual mindset, from a worldly mindset. Oh, let's just have party. Let's, let's, let's be happy and, have, and go party and let's go dance and enjoy our life. They can't see, they can't see uh, the real message in the song. That's the point I'm trying to get to. There's other, I, I didn't really take this in or I would have had more examples. So it's like, um, remember how they would have that, that old adage like, you know, the reasons why they shoot up such and such is not because of the, mu- uh, not because of the music. I remember it was big with Eminem and stuff like that. Eminem was like, no, it's not because of my music, it's because of how you raise your children. No, it's actually both because evil communication corrupts good manners, exactly. right? Exactly. So you watching t- uh, Takashi Six Nine uh, Gumbo video, it it on the carnal level, it's bumping. You know, you're hearing the bass, you're seeing this, everything's flashy and whatnot. But then when you you go back to the scriptures, you're like, well, hold on, what is he actually saying in the in this in the track? You know, get a you know get a Uzi, shoot up this, slap a, a box down a brother, so on and so forth, right? So. It's showing you that the carnal versus the spiritual angle, and that we have now through um, now through the, the truth, waking up to the truth. Now we have the option of being able to see both sides, and which one would we like to take, blessing or curses? Right, like remember, like those songs, but you know, when for those that been to parties or been to clubs and stuff like that, you know what I mean? And they play, they start playing that. Those war tunes or whatever. I want. Let me just think. Of even like, let's say they're playing like you know, Lil John and them. Remember how like Lil Scrappy and all that. We some head busters. We some head busters. And you're in the club now. You want to bust this man's head. You want to bust this man's head just because you heard the song. You don't know the guy from nowhere, but the song said we're head busters, and you wanna you wanna be a head buster. So I'm gonna bust this guy's head. That's the carnal mindset is, yo, that song is hype, yo, yo, any, any, anything, yo, anyone, anyone wants some, anything. But the spiritual mind is saying, this is telling me to do evil, to, to murder, to do wickedly to my brother for no reason. That's a, that's a carnal and spiritual uh, examination on that whole topic. All right. So, uh, read on, sorry. Verse 6, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Having in a readiness to revenge, revenge all disobedience with obedience. So you might do things that's disobedient or people might be doing stuff that's disobedient to God in the world. The way you pay that back is by being obedient to what the Bible says. 
All right. But it says what? You, you read all of it? Exactly. When your obedience is fulfilled. So when you actually do what the Bible says in contrary to what the world is saying and what this whole disobedient world is doing, when you have that mindset, then you're going against, you're, you're, you're showing revenge against the wickedness. That's how you're casting down the imaginations, like you were saying. You know what I mean? And, and uh, bringing things into the captivity of Christ or the thought, what does it say? Uh, bring in, bring it into bring the it, cap- bringing it into the captivity, bringing into captivity all thoughts that are against Christ. By what? Being obedient, showing obedience and not disobedience. That's how you battle that thing. All right? So now I want to show an example of what I was talking about from the carnal mindset to the spiritual. Get get um, the day live. One of my favorite movies. But I just want to use a particular aspect of it for y'all to understand what I'm talking about. Uh, we have the timestamp. So this is a movie. It's an old school movie. Roddy Roddy Piper. These Esau, it doesn't matter. This is the message I want y'all to understand. <laughs> it's the time stamp is on there. Can you see it? So just pause for a second. Let me let me explain. In what in regards to what I'm saying. See, when you don't have the shades on, that's the carnal. That's a carnal uh, aspect of looking at what things are, are what, what's going on in the world. But when he puts the shades on, now he's seeing things from the spiritual, uh, from from the spiritual uh, point of view. I'm using that example, okay, from the spiritual point of view. Okay, now go continue on. You know where to stop. Let's see some of the things that he's looking at. It. I want, I want y'all to understand. Come to the Caribbean. This is a perfect example right here. Come to the Caribbean. Now, what was I saying from a spiritual standpoint? Marry and reproduce. Pause it for a second. That's that's nicely said by them. What is it from an Israelite spiritual standpoint? What would that be saying? Commit fornication and adultery. You know what I'm saying? That's what it would be saying. Impregnate and and and... and not fulfill, you know, the laws of marriage. No, that's what it's saying. Commit fornication and whoredom. Commit lasciviousness. But you know, it just said, you know, marry and reproduce. It's nicely said by Esau, but we know that it's not. It's, it's saying worse than that. Go on. I just want y'all to see these examples. I see anything from a spiritual standpoint, you're bugging out. That's what it is. Like, you learn this truth, and then you start seeing the difference. You start understanding the scriptures, and you see what's going on. There was a men's apparel. There's some clothing store. I'll look. No independent thought. Consume. Sale. Pause it. The last being put out there. See that? So they showed us the store, whatever, and it's really saying no independent thought, telling you how to dress. That's why you see these, you see how these guys be dressing, some guys be dressing crazy out here nowadays. I'll just talk about the people with the pants hanging under their boxers. They got their, their dirty boxers out that door. And then they have the jeans under the bottom of, like, completely under their, their, their body. And they're wearing that and walking around like it's, it's cool. This is, it's crazy, man. Or the, you see how the females, I'm on. No independent thought. The females, yo, they dress? Oh, my goodness. The season of the flesh is about to go down, too. Y'all brothers better gird up your loins and not think carnal. That's why I'll just use that for an example when it comes to these females. Carnally minded, when you look at her, like, oh, she's, you know, oh, she's the one because she's smiling at you with the brown skin, you know, and, and, and she got good hair. He's smiling at you uh, with the big booty and all that. But, you know, from a spiritual standpoint, you got to see the demon. You know what I'm saying? Program that in your mind. You got to see your eyes. You know, like in the movies when the demon's eyes, them light up. You know what I'm saying? You got to see that. 
you gotta you gotta see that. You gotta see that thing, and maybe then maybe then it'll make you turn your head and go about your business and not entertain her blinking at you and smiling up at you. Anyway, go on. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Look at all the things that it's telling them. Buy, consume, obey, <laughs> work eight hours, sleep eight hours, play. It's telling you to do it. And this is, it's, it's, it's an exaggeration, but guess what? This is what all these different things that are out there is telling us. You look on the buses, you see all these different promotions. You see, oh, this new, this new, uh, um, meal you can get from McDonald's or whatever, the new bacon double cheeseburger, the bacon, new bacon wrap. It's telling you to go eat some pork, right? I'm just using that for example, or a new movie, or, the, you know, they're putting the sodomite stuff out there in the big billboards, two mans holding hands. What's it saying? <laughs> get with, you know, uh, get with the same sex. No thought, sleep, submit. These are the things that's going on. Read, I mean, Play. Go ahead, play. Hopefully, y'all get what, what the message. The carnal side from the spiritual side. I'll just talk a bit more. Fun. Above it says what? Watch TV. Obey. No thought. Don't think about stuff. Don't, don't say no. Don't stay asleep. Don't, don't wake up to what this truth is telling you. These are the examples that you gotta you gotta look at things from a spiritual standpoint. The magazines that obey. You see that? It's clear as day what you're, what you're being told. Do not question authority. Watch TV, no imagination, all of that. Alright, that's it. I'm trying to I'm trying to add the whole visual aspect into it so you can kind of see what's being said spiritually we're being told to do these things like submit have no thought don't question authority don't do nothing you know don't don't do anything that's going to put you in line with what god wants that's pretty much what it's saying and what they're doing out there in the world but you gotta say hey i'm gonna do what scripture says i'm gonna do i'm gonna, I'm gonna look at what it says well, i'm gonna look at what i see with the with the shades on and understand what's really going on and i'm gonna do the right thing according to god all right um, want to say something? Hey, officer, can I get a scripture on that? With, yes, with, yes, In yes. terms of the shades? Yes. Uh, Revelation 3 and verse 18 is one of my favorite scriptures. Oh, Captain Isaac brought this out when he was uh, at Montreal. But Revelation 3 verse 18, it's going in uh, to that shades or not being able to, or being able to see properly. And see spiritually, see spiritually as opposed to just carnally. So, uh, Revelation 3 verse 18. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salves, that thou mayest see. Right. So say what you want to say on it. So uh, I counsel you to buy me of uh, gold tried in the fire, so that's keeping God's laws, that thou mayest be rich, so that we get the kingdom of heaven, right? Especially in today's times. And white raiment that um and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed. So that's just like that. Uh, the white raiment is going into your clothing not being defiled. So you again you're keeping God's laws. Uh, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salves that thou mayest see. This is what we're doing currently through the scriptures. Now we're able to see spiritually, see everything on a spiritual level. You take a look at coronavirus. Now the deacons, the, the, the leaders, the elders, Bishop Nathaniel, is guiding you through the scriptures to be able to see it on a spiritual level. That no, it's not just coronavirus. That, hey, they're actually putting this out there to attack us. Just like how it was in Exodus 1 and verse 10. Right? All these things so that, again, the eye cells, so that thou mayest see. So that spiritual angle. Yeah, so that the eye salve would be the shades in that video. That those shades. The spirit, seeing things from a spiritual aspect, all right? Yeah, that's a good precept, yes? It ties in with the whole, the video, and just having a spiritual mindset and have a spiritual uh, viewing on things in comparison to people that just know things from the worldly standpoint, okay? Um, was that it? 
Oh, that was a precept you got. Sorry. Let's get Galatians chapter 6. Galatians 6. And we're going to read from 7 to 9. Galatians chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Don't, hey, don't be deceived. Don't be fooled. You're not going to mock God. He'll give you laws and, and give you life and tell you you're supposed to live like this. And you, then you know, you learn the truth as an Israelite so you understand what's wrong and what you shouldn't be doing, but yet you still go and do it. You, you, be careful that you don't mock God. Go on. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. We, are, we always hear that you reap what you sow. So if your mind, if you're, if you're sowing, if, if, oh boy. Read on. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 go into it further, but let me see. Go on. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Uh huh. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So if you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap of the flesh corruption, sin, you know what I'm saying, death, judgment. All right, go on. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap, reap life everlasting. Uh huh. Verse 9. And let us not be weary in well doing. Let us not be weary in well doing. Let us not be weary. Let, don't be worried. Don't, don't be, don't be uh, slack in doing good. Go on. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If, if, if. In due season we shall reap if we faint not. Same thing on the negative side. That's why I said to you, brothers and sisters, that's doing crazy stuff, that's doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, just because nothing ever happened to you yet, don't mean say it's not going to happen. That's why you should be in fear to move, because just like that, in due season, let's just use the flip side for that. In due season, you're going to reap what you've been sowing. All that wickedness you've been doing, all, all these these. These brothers that's been watching twerk videos all day, that's been watching, you know, whatever type of slackness, and you keep entertaining that, what do you think is going to happen? All of a sudden, you're going to be walking one day, and there's going to be a girl, and she's going to be like the, the, the video vixen. She's going to be like that, the ideal girl, the same type of girl he'd be watching twerking. And she's gonna come. She's gonna stare you right in your eyes, and she's gonna come to you. And she's gonna be like, "Oh, what are those? What are those on your on your on your shirt? What are those um those uh, frills down there? Oh, those look so good." She gonna she go she gonna pull the wool over your eyes, and you're gonna think, "Yeah, she wants to learn the truth." So I'm gonna show her the truth. You know the story. She wants to learn the truth. Oh, oh come! I want you to come and tell me and my girls about that. You need you gotta come and and then you go to the house. And they're <laughs> and they're in lingerie, <laughs> and, and they pull you in. You're not, you know, a lot of brothers are not gonna run like Joseph. They're not gonna run like Joseph. They're gonna be like, no, 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 Kevin Hart, <laughs> no. But really, in their mind, they're saying, damn, damn, wow, jeez, little things like that. I'm I'm trying to use that for an example. You sisters as well that watching these movies and you're you're lusting after uh, Morris Chestnut, whoever these who these sisters who the sisters like Idris 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 Alba or whatever. Oh, Michael B. Jordan, yeah, y'all seeing Michael B. Jordan in uh, in Black Panther? And be like, damn, I need a brother like that. And then Gallum is going and getting all sorts of crazy gadgets and stuff to, to, to satisfy themselves. And then what? What is it going to lead to? Is it going to lead to a brother coming and approaching you and, and telling you everything you want to hear? And the next thing you know, you, 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 you laid up with this brother. You know what I mean? You reap what you sow. All right, let's get Sirach chapter 7. Sirach 7. Uh, we're going to read from 1 to 3. Sirach, chapter 7, verse 1. Do no evil, so shall no harm come unto thee. You see, it sounds so simple, right? But there's so much more to that. 
But it said, do no evil, and then no harm is going to come to you. Go on. Depart from the unjust, and iniquity shall turn away from thee. Yeah, because some of y'all love to be around your friends in the world all the time. You don't be around no brothers in the truth, but you have time. You have all the time for your friends in the world. You don't be around no sister in the truth, but you have time for all your friends in the world or your family. You can't, you can't, you, you want to, you, you, you have all, your, you have all the time to be around auntie so-and-so, cousin, this, that, and the third, your mom, your sister, your brother, your cousin, whoever that don't care about this Bible, you have all the time to be around them. But when it comes time to do stuff with your brothers or your sisters, oh, I don't know how I'm busy. I can't do that. I'm too busy. It said what? Read that part of verse two again. Depart from the unjust. And iniquity shall turn away from thee. That's the only way that iniquity was going to turn away from you is when you depart from the unjust. That doesn't say you cut them off, but you shouldn't be running towards to be around them all the time. That shouldn't be your mindset. Your, your mindset should be about building bonds with your brother or your sister. That's where your mindset should be. But some people don't got that mindset. They got that, that's a spiritual, you know, being around your brothers, your, your spiritual family instead of your carnal family, that's what we have to look at it like that. Because when you're around your fa your family, that's the carnal side. When you're around your family in here, that's the spiritual side. So, stay being carnal, carnally minded. It's going to catch up. You're, you're reaping. You're reaping. But we don't know. I don't know when, when you're going to, you know, uh, I mean, you're sowing, sorry. You're, see, I'm, I'm jacking it up. You're sowing that carnal, that carnal mindset in the thought of being around the unjust. So there's going to be what? Iniquity, which is sin. You continue with that, sin will be knocking at your door. Well, I don't know what kind of sin. I don't know. You end up breaking the stuff because you want to have, um, <laughs> you know, you want to have a, a, a hot soup on a, on a Saturday because, you know, Benji, they always want to have soup, so you're over there at your house, your your family's house, and they're cooking your favorite meal, and you're hungry. Oh, it won't hurt me if you just have some some of the soup. That's how they, that's how you get they they get you with the sin. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. Are you has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.